you may think that FD teams are big and like high money, lots of sponsorships flying around. And for some of the people participating in FD, that's totally true. Today's Tuesday, it's the start of, I believe our fifth vlog. In a few hours, we're leaving for Orlando. This will be our first round of Formula Drift. That's it, it's coming up. It's, uh, it's really soon, but I wanna show you. He's out just mowing the lawn. <laughs> it's just a couple of guys with a, with a drift car. It just happens to be. So not every FD team has to be the, the highest, the biggest, the most wealthy. Uh, it can be fairly relatable to the average person. It's still a lot of work though. Start here, we'll work our way up. We got Jalen. Hello. We're gonna start at the feet. We're gonna avoid that area, come back around. Christopher's here. But not going. We got a Mateen as well. Jimmy. <laughs> that was really awkward, by the way. And yeah. finally, this is Quinn. Even Alex. And we have a natter day because the flamingos are eating pink flowers. Do you see that right there? And that is why they are now pink. He learned a thing. He did a thing why he learned. They, why do they taste like pineapples? You never eat a flamingo? Mm -hmm. It's like a Hawaiian delicacy. I want to get into this. Oh yeah. Nice. We went straight. Gotta get you some beard balm. Yeah, I don't have the. I'm not gonna touch. I'm not allowed to touch. Okay. Yeah. No. Am I allowed to touch? It'll grab you if you touch it. Oh. <laughs> what what will specifically the beard yeah. oh okay it pulls you in it does yeah. the eyes and everything does he, does he, he does talk or? very smooth and it's very it's oh, casual and it's yeah. yeah i am now that i'm closer than i was up. before i am feeling a little bit i need to be a bit closer uh, yes yeah, it, it works it works yeah. yeah well that's i guess top tip top tip talk a little bit quieter and then people have to get a bit closer and then you just go in for the yeah. yeah. The smooch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. How, that's how you get it. Okay. That's what the, the quiet time. close talkers are about. Now I know. Exactly. Intimacy. T minus 16 hours? Are we at 16 vote at? Uh, no, not quite. 50. We are currently at 13 hours into the trip. 13 hours. That is the bridge that denotes that we are in Florida. Wait, I fucked up. You fucked up? I fucked up. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're in Georgia. Okay, so this is why they brought me as the engineer. Uh, <laughs> there we go. We'll get there. The, the, I even read this and I said, thank you for visiting South Carolina. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> right, cool. I hope you enjoy your Florida peaches. sunbeat on the back of a trailer so I know I'm in Florida uh, first Bucky's impression it's unreasonably big it's so silly it's too big it's just it's just too large the arrogance of man the Bucky's 
This is a gas station. No, this is the gas station. The ignorance against whatever God you believe in. For the sheer sake of convenient fuel. They said there was a God in this country. He's not present. He's not here. He died long ago. The fuel prices. Infinite fuel prices. There's no God <laughs> watching over. Except one true God. He's coming for you. He waves to the people. Your God. Your God waves to the people. I don't... This is your war prophet here. Your... <laughs> The, your, your Middle East oil drinker, he's here to wave and bless the people with his cheap fuel prices. It smells good though. Mm. It's so, it smells so good. What is going on here? This is super weird. Okay, we're in here. It's massive in here. This is ridiculous. Why does this exist? That's where you get the brisket. They make it here. That's what that smell is, this Texas Roundup. And then that's the... Um, Fudge and kolaches and roasted the, nuts. The beef turkey. And then look, this is where your shopping is. You can literally go house shopping here. Oh if you God. like women's lingerie, it's over there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't ask him what he's wearing underneath that. Yeah. Because it's tight <laughs> and it's sexy. Orlando Speed World, as seen in many early 90s NASCAR specific games. I don't know how many hours it took us, probably like 18. I, I thought the 15, I thought, yeah, it was a lot. Um, we got a JZX100 uh, chaser greeting us. There's some people waving. We got a G35 slammed out in the field. This will be packed tomorrow. And we're just gonna head up to Will Call Hero and uh, uh, adventure into the world of the ultra hot Australian Sun. As you can see, I've taken on uh, my new alter ego. No longer am I fake Jelsey Denofa, but rather I am now Aaron Losey's brother, Darren Losey. What are we up to? Walking the racetrack for grip. What are your shoes made out of? Um, well, it was rubber, but I did too many burnouts, so now they're, they're kind of. They're kind of. Like, and what are what are tires made out of? Rubber. So we're just planning our grip uh, here and we're planning our lines and bank and stuff and suggestions for our driver. Ta-da! Making notes, making notes, and we're doing some learns as well. Hell yeah. Hell oh, yeah. Everybody's going through all their stuff right now. Um, these guys are having their chat. Uh, some of the drivers are connecting with each other. The Pro 1 and the Pro Spec drivers are hanging out. But next to us is Tire Stack. Now to give you some context, all cars in Pro Spec have to run GT radials and they have to get them from Tire Stack. So Tire Stack uh, is required to change them for you. The reason being is they don't want any cheating. So we don't have to change our own tires, which is sick. We do have to put the wheels on the car, but Tire Stack already did all of these for us. And this is the pile that they're doing for everybody else. And you can kind of see they're doing some work here. They got three guys. This is basically all of Form of the D's tires in one pile. And you can see there, these guys are working, he's sweating. He's sweating, he's working so hard. Yeah. So you can kind of go through and see all the, the how everybody else's like wheel and tire choices all in one clump, it's kind of neat. So uh, we can see a variety of, of different wheels decisions, like three piece versus one piece. There's a huge like variety here, it's really cool. And then there's a, a really nice meaty tire pile to dig through.
Barry Boatwright. <laughs> it's him. He's he's arrived to uh, rescue us uh, in our need of mechanics. You can see these hands. They're hardworking hands. He's a hardworking man. Let's get I into mean, those cuticles, though. Oh my gosh. Clean right now. Oh my gosh. I don't know how. Did we get the wrong mechanic? Probably. Okay. No, I'm kidding. To be uh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> to give you context, uh, two of our mechanics, uh, you, I think you saw in the last vlog, two of our mechanics, uh, for unique and separate reasons, were unable to make it. So, uh, Mr. Boatwright is this is this is real Florida meat. It's it made. Is. Of, it's made of Florida. He drove up three hours. Three and a half. Three yeah. and one half hour. Yep. At 70 miles an hour. It was under that because it was raining the whole way. Okay, so 62 miles an hour all the way here, yeah. just to come volunteer. We may use his services, we may not, but his services are available. Now, if you're at home and you're wondering, hey, I like the services he offers, well, uh, he's got a lady, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you can only, you can check out his, uh, you just just watch this video a couple times, just hit the repeat and you'll get, you'll get there. It's voiceover, Quinn, here. I'm in your ears. I'm crawling my little voice, my tongue, like a worm into your brain to talk to you about how the event actually went. Uh, you may have may, may or may not have read our review on Facebook. Regardless, uh, this was our team's very first time. And for me, it was my first time ever being to an FD event at all. And for two of our other members, that was the same. And even for our spotter, it was his first time ever being a spotter at a drift event. So we had a completely fresh team. Our car was really grippy in, in practice and a lot of our competitors or fellow drifters were having trouble keeping up, although they weren't specifically trying to keep up. Uh, as you can see through our practice runs here, uh, our car just kept getting faster and faster and the runs kept getting cleaner and cleaner. Uh, so that was really cool. It meant that our car was healthy, that we weren't, the car wasn't breaking down. Uh, actually, to give you context, this is the most amount of runs that this team has ever done in FD, uh, period. We ran about 12 practice and warm-up laps. So that went really good. Uh, but there was some stuff that we were learning along the way. We were learning how to communicate to each other and what was important about the communication and when to communicate. Uh, we were learning what our specific roles were and how to how people were filling those and where places we need to make up. A lot of this was invented on the fly. As much as we spent time ahead of time preparing, we even had a stretching session as a team earlier in the day just to make sure everybody was loose and limbered up. Uh, but regardless, we had to get into the action and really try and figure it out. For most of the weekend, we just changed tires. Uh, there was a couple setup changes. But I learned even as the sort of uh, engineer that you can't make a lot of changes on the fly. You get very little uh, amount of time to practice. And so it's very minor changes that we can make. Um, and so that really left us with a good car. Um, eventually our team by about halfway through our practice session really had their sort of schedule, their personal schedules and their personal duties and roles and their communication figured out. So it really just, fell down to emotions. Uh, we had an emotional time. It was uh, some highs, it was some lows. And in the end, uh, the rain, although the rain is difficult, and the rain came during our comp top 32 competition battle, the reality is the rain wasn't that big of a, a hurdle. What it came down to is being emotionally prepared for, for the, the battles, being uh, mentally ready and that's not just a driver thing that's actually the team thing both myself our spotter um, we sort of got a little lost in the moment uh, and that wasn't very helpful in the long run uh, most of our teamwork worked really good throughout the weekend but I felt uh, that we had a little bit of break breakdown at those those crucial heavy moments where things uh, meant a little bit more than just going having fun so that's something we're working on in the future. Uh, having done my first ever FD event and having ever done the first time I've ever been a, uh, a quote unquote uh, engineer crew chief, I don't know. I don't know what I am still. I'm still figuring out my specific role. Um, uh, it was interesting and exciting and uh, it was a roller coaster of emotions. So uh, if I'm still having emotions now when I'm talking to you many days later while I edit this video, then obviously I had a lot of emotions in the moment too. And so that's something we've got to conquer. We've got to make sure that we're calm, we're ready and relaxed uh, in the heat of the battle. Hey 
It's about 7.30 at night. Yeah. And yeah, my voice is fucked. Uh, oh. I got so stressed out at one point today, I had a nosebleed. That was cool. He's got brain uh, cancer. Yeah, probably. Um, Barry's walking with me. We got... <laughs> Jalen's coming up with us as well. We're gonna head up. Um, a lot of people have had uh, very mixed runs. There should be enough now that uh, we might, if we just do an okay run, we'll qualify automatically. There's been enough spins, enough crashes, enough grip ups and off courses. Um, regardless, nervous. Just about to go for qualifying. Got that hot boy stuff, he's really excited. Hell yeah. Uh, we're in the stands. Let's go. Let's climb up very carefully. Very carefully. Okay, we'll get up here. We got a run happening beforehand. <laughs> Who knows? FD University. an exceptionally good run by that driver in the donut media sponsored car that's been interesting okay yeah i just never knew which flavor they were is it, is it just all of the different donuts okay they have a lot of donuts go there if you're hungry i don't know if they serve coffee it's kind of weird you'd think you get coffee with the donuts okay we're up alex getting his car warmed up he's gonna get those tires scrubbed in today we're gonna see how our emotions go if if we had uh, the car really set up nicely and we got a really good line and flow in practice. The track's a little colder, it's changed a little bit, the sun's gone down. And so let's just make sure that the emotions are really in a good spot. Barry's got the double cam going on here. These are our zoom lens. spice we didn't get the quite out on the wall uh, we got a good smoke uh, we have really good center transition a little bit tight on that inner clip uh, and yeah pretty good push let's go chat with him see how it goes and let's let's measure how he feels okay for those of you who don't know this is Mike at NST and he's sitting here telling us all of the goodies the good stories about grassroots drifting and how it all started I have to sneak away because I got to go to the driver's meeting but we'll catch up soon because I have to tell you about how qualifying went. So today, during qualifying, um, the sun went away and the track, the, the car just got so grippy and everyone was messing up, everyone. I scored a 63 and that number sounds terrible, right? No one brags about scoring a 63. I mean, I was so in my head when I was found out the score because I knew I ran so bad because I was gripped up all over the track and it was it was just terrible I was really disappointed in myself and the uh, quality of my run but it seemed like everybody had the same issues that I did as well uh, so it caused me to be about halfway through the pack uh, I think I'm number 21st out of 30 38 drivers or however many there are um, so all in all not too bad but we're about halfway midway in the in the pack um, so that lifted my spirits back up uh, we are, will now know for tomorrow that we will have to add uh, you know we have to make the car a little bit more loose uh, when it becomes nighttime because uh, we have to intend for the additional grip so that the tracks gonna give since the track cools down um, but I'm really excited that we didn't have to do it again uh, it was one of my goals was to qualify correctly the first time. Um, 
and uh, we did do that so check off the list uh, and then our next goal is to get into the top 16 tomorrow so we'll have to check that one off tomorrow when that happens um, we still don't know who we're going to go against yet uh, we're about to have a driver's meeting and I think they will reveal who I'm going against or maybe they may need some time to get some of the, uh, the stats and stuff together to figure out who it is but if you want to take a quick look into the driver's meeting here Formula Drift is so cool Boom, boom, boom. Here we are. Drivers meeting is happening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, welcome to Friday. The vibes are much higher than they were yesterday. Even though today's not the busy day, it is busier. Uh, we're, it's early in the morning, we qualified last night. Uh, we qualified somewhere in the middle of the pack. There was quite an aggressive, if you watch, if you just watch the run, um, there was quite aggressive temperature change on the track just before qualifying. And we fell victim, like many other teams, to that, that grip change. And so our setup from practice was no longer relative to qualifying. Practice happened earlier in the day in a very hot track temperature. And as soon as that track temperature dropped, and it dropped almost, I'm gonna say around 15 to 20 degrees, uh, all of a sudden the car was way too gripped up. And so when you're dealing an optimal, when you're dealing right at the edge of like your perfect setup, those setup changes become more sensitive. Uh, and I'm not used to that. And we had some discussions about it and we're gonna pay a bit more attention to it. So regardless, we're qualified. We're qualified with a driver that we, we feel confident that we're gonna have a good, clean, easy, even battle with. And so it, that's really exciting. Um, the vibe definitely has come up quite a bit. It is way more hectic here already. So today we'll be top 32 and we're excited and stoked. But if you look up, you can see maybe it may rain and we're not planned for that yet. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Car looks good. Weather maybe not so much, but I have faith that everything's gonna work out. Okay, and if I were to just double check, he feels pretty good. Yeah. Wadman got a little kickstart in my heart as Alex Lickliner. And Wadman needed a push. A little bump start for the Wadman. Both these guys, you can see Lickliner lacking the angle. Wadman going up, going down. And Lickliner having a difficult time. And Wadman transitions through a little bit of straightening there over the jump. Wadman now into that second outer zone. It's really hard to see, just kind of both the cars at the same time there. So here we go, Licklider, Wadman. So here goes Licklider out front. The NST never stops tuning. So, oh, Wadman drops down way low. And look, Licklider rises to the occasion, not so high on the bank, but, but well done up to the first inside clip, the second inside clip. And Licklider looks like he is putting together a decent lead run. Nothing to, to write home about. So what time is it? It is 4.30 in the morning. We have been driving for many, many hours. Um, and some sparks arose in the mirror. Bum, bum, bum. Where 
you think you can get one of those on a Sunday? <laughs> I feel shame for my family. <laughs> this is a cooler. This is a man. He shouldn't have sat he's, on a cooler. He's a he's now a, a, these are the testicles which are now much cooler. Because cooler man has gotten cooler. These gentlemen are under. This is gonna, right? The more you ratchet it, it's gonna pull this up. Yeah. You can pull from really far away or really short. Uh, Whatever you recommend. Doesn't matter. I prefer really short. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and we have kind of enough light. <laughs> we got to touch my skin. <laughs> It's all fine. Four. Yeah. We're probably at 5 a.m. now. So, although Orlando was, you know, a mixed bag, let's end this video on a more positive note, if that makes sense. Um, I've got wheels now. <laughs> Finally, I, I've been waiting to just have the, the freedom to move around and do the stuff. Uh, it is a very, very rough... <laughs> Very rough M edition. Uh, I think it's a 95, 94, somewhere in there. Uh, Mazda Miata, 1.8 1. factory, 1.8 uh, five-speed. Hell yeah, Jimmy. Uh, part of the J and JAC. This is sitting in his driveway. He's like, "Hey man, you can use it while you're here." So hell yeah. Uh, so we'll see you in the next one.